Hello, so at the moment all the videos I've been doing regarding sort of Wuhan virus, coronavirus, novel coronavirus, I think is its correct name at the moment because I don't actually have a name for the strain. Um, lots of interest in those videos. What I wanted to do today was a video where I've been getting a lot of questions regarding sort of fit testing of masks and how do I know if a certain mask would fit me or something like that. Now, annoyingly, with a lot of masks, you can't find a good sizing guide online. So, they're either sold as universal one-fits-all. If you see that brilliant, it generally means, unless you have a very strange-shaped head, you can probably adjust the straps well enough to get a good fit test um, and stuff like that. Or they'll be sold in small, medium, or large. But if you're getting into Milsurp masks, that's where they might have completely different weird sizing guides. And the annoying thing is, although small, medium, and large kind of makes sense, with some masks, the sizes are kind of like... In Soviet masks, one, two, three, four, they get bigger as the numbers go up. In Western masks, or not all Western masks, but in things like, I think the Polish MP5 does this, and the British S10 does this, and quite a few others probably do as well. Size one is actually really big, and then size four is a small. So again, you're gonna have to look up your mask, or ask in the comments and see if anybody knows. Regarding a particular mask, so what I wanted to do is show different types of masks you can get, because the problem people are having now is masks they'd ideally want are just completely selling out. Um, so the bare minimum kind of mask you want is something like this. This is what a lot of people call an N95, but I don't think that's actually the proper term. As far as I'm aware, N95 refers to the variants that are just, um, what's the word for it, just like particle rating 95 as the Americans would do it. In European countries, and I think quite a lot of Eastern Europe and Asia, um, you use P1, P2 and P3. P1 is the lowest level of filter protection for particulates, P3 is the best. So if you're buying one, you ideally want to go for P3. The problem is, lots of places are sold out of P3. Um, some doctors on things I've been watching have said P1 masks are good enough for coronavirus. Others have been saying you need at least P2, or some, you know, like me, I've been saying just get P3 because it's the best level of protection. So, this is a very good half face mask for like the cheap dust mask type ones if you're going after the disposable type simply because they've designed it in a way where it makes a very good face seal uh, this one's called the alpha mesh um, so the reason these are good is this one is FP what they call 2.5 um, although it just says <coughs> apologies P2 there um, so basically this is P2 so not as good as P3 but you generally struggle to find dust masks in P3 you can get them but it's just in general, because um, at the point people are going for P3 filters, they're normally actually going for full-size masks, or, you know, like, rubberized half-face masks. The reason this one is good is, because of how they've designed it, it actually conforms properly to your face. So, this is the problem you get with a lot of masks, is that they don't conform very well to people's faces, or if you get the wrong size, it's not going to offer protection. So the reason, you know, like we were saying about the surgical masks, the doctor's masks people are wearing don't really provide very good protection, because while they do stop you rubbing your mouth when you've got the mask on, with your fingers and things like that, if you've got, you know, the virus potentially on your fingers, what they don't uh, stop is they don't actually filter. Because they don't sit tight to the face, air gets through the sides. So a mask like this is designed to sit tight to the face, so I'll just demonstrate this one. So most of these have a neck strap you do up first. So what we do is we'll get that behind the head and do up the neck strap. Then what you do is you get this, put it here, and you stretch this bit over here. So you've got the top strap going over your ears. You can wear these with glasses, as you can see. Although you'll need to make sure the glasses aren't breaking the seal with your nose. Now the reason these ones are good is obviously you can now tighten the bit at the back there. Um, and it's properly elasticated and as I said, the facial fit of it means it does fit properly to your face. So this one, although it's P2, I think it has a little bit of charcoal in here as well that just is more to do with odour than anything else. Now, with fit testing these, the only real way of fit testing them if it's only a particulate filter is by doing a pressure check. Because if you have a full NBC style filter or, you know, like ABEC P3 style filter, you can do a vapour test of something like banana oil. The problem is with particulate filters, that doesn't work because smells travel through particulate filters even if the microns don't. So with these, if they have an exhale valve on them, what you can do is cover the exhale valve and breathe out. And if you see the mask inflate like it just did, compared to normal, you know to somewhat of a degree the mask is working. The only issue with things like this is, of, of course, because, you know, these don't really... Uh, I'm trying to think of the word here. Because air can pass through the entire filter medium of the mask, it's very hard to pressure check them. So, as said, this is kind of the minimum level of protection you'd want. So I'll take this one off again now. So, 
as I said, this one's called the Alpha Mesh and is very good. You can get other brands that are similar to this. In general, I don't recommend masks like this, even though I like this particular brand of one. Um, because a lot of them, what, the problem with a lot of dust masks is they don't do very tight to your face, you know, don't do up very tight. So then they let air through the sides, um, so it defeats the point of having a filtered mask on. Um, if you're going to get them, look for the ones that have like a nose ridge on them, or a design like this. So you can at least crimp the metal and keep it, you know, tight to your face that way. Um, so that's these. So now I can show you masks you can actually fit test properly. So as said, what you probably want to do is go for a more rubberized style mask. So there's loads of industrial brands of half face respirators. And yes, for all the people saying the virus can get into your eyes, so these masks are useless, wear goggles with it or whatever. And if people are saying it can get into your ears, wear a rain hood with it, with goggles and the mask. You know, there's ways around that. So. This is a uh, 3M, and this is a genuine one, not a Chinese copy. Um, 7,500. It says 7,502 because I believe 7,501 is small, 7,502 is medium, 7,503 is large. Um, so again, a very similar strap system, but a bit more thorough. And these are the P3 filters, so the very good ones, the ones equivalent to P100 filters, what you preferably want for something like coronavirus. So we'll do that up again, same principle. Um, but we, I can show you actually how you'd fit test this one. So once you've got the mask on and you do the straps up to make sure it's tight, we'll just check my glasses aren't breaking the seal, there we go. With the exhale valve, if I cover the exhale valve up with my hand and then breathe out sharply, the mask should inflate. <coughs> there we go, now it's popped my ear. So that's pressurised to a good degree. As I said, if you were professionally fit testing masks, you do both positive and negative pressure checks. You'd also... Um, you know, like use things like banana oil with vapour filters to test it that way. With particulate filters you can't do that though. But for the people asking, yes, these are very good P3 filters and the circular disc ones are fine. And the pad ones that you put in front of the vapour filters are fine. So, yep, I recommend those. Any of the 3M half face masks are good and any of the rubberized ones that are from proper brands are good. I would say though to avoid some of the really, really cheapo no-name brand ones. Uh, like the ones that are black and yellow. Um, because some of those have just, you know, god-awful filters on that even if you get the mask tight to your face, the filters are pretty much useless. And then with a full face mask, there is two potential ways of pressure checking it. It depends somewhat on your mask, because if the XL valve is in a really hard to reach place, you can't do it. So, and I can show you something with a particular filter. So let me take my glasses off of this, and though you can't wear glasses with full face masks, with some masks you can get a spectacle insert, but the problem is if your glasses are going over your ears like that, it breaks the seal of the mask. So. Let's get this one again. Put him on. So we'll get the head harness comfy and tighten the straps. There we go. So how you would fit check one of these. With a filter on, you do this. Breathe in, my ears popped again. Now, if you only had a P3 sort of particle filter with a really big front end, which you can't do that with, take the filter off and then fit check this way. It's harder to actually do with your hand rather than the filter. But you can see the mask's doing it, and we knew it worked when the filter was on. For doing the exhale check, it, you essentially want to breathe out while holding the exhale valve like I did with the 3M. The only issue now with this mask is um, because the exhale valve is behind the cover, you can't get your hand really airtight to it. So I just try it, but it's not really going to work. But as I said, with most masks, you can find some way of either doing a positive or a negative pressure check, and you'll know they work that way. So a question I got, which is a quite important one, is about sort of um, decontamination. So let's say you've been out and about, you've had your mask on, we'll use this one for example, and people have been sneezing and coughing with you. I'm probably, um, near you and all that, I'm probably going to do a full decontamination video at some point, but for just today I wanted to include a thing that I'm getting asked a lot. So one of the things I really like is rubbing alcohol. It's 70% alcohol, but you can get different kinds of sanitizer sprays. Do some research and see what's available. Uh, ideally you want something that has no risk of dam damaging a mask forever, which rubbing alcohol doesn't. So there's a very simple way you can do it with rubbing alcohol. Uh, it's literally this, if you get one in the spray bottle. I also can't smell the rubbing alcohol, which smells very strong, so we know all the filtration that's airtight that way. So what I'm going to do is now rub all this down with my hands. One thing I would say is if you're using a P3 type filter, Rub it along the bottom, or any filter, just so you know there's not going to be a load of bacteria. Then what you do, obviously, is take the mask off. Ideally, you'd want to hang it by your door or something, and that smells really strong now. And then what you do is you'd spray your hands again and give your hands a wipe down. 
Obviously any contaminated clothing you'd potentially want to do that with as well, but rubbing alcohol is very good in these spray bottles because it's a very strong thing that kills germs and bacteria and, you know, viruses and everything. But it's in the spray bottle, it's easy to make a fine mist with it. Um, so that's that. Um, another thing I want to quickly say, because a lot of people don't seem to understand this, so I thought I'd just include it in this video as a last sort of little note, is people are saying it's too expensive to buy the full face masks because you have to throw the filters away every time you use it. If you're using a particulate filter, they last literally months, unless you're in like a really smoggy environment or something, um, and they clog up really fast with like dust in it. You'll know that a particle filter is expiring because basically it gets harder and harder to breathe with it because the breathing resistance is going up because there's more stuff getting stuck in the filter. So they actually become more efficient at filtration the more you use them. Um, but eventually the breathing resistance will just become unmanageable and you'll want to replace the filter that way. You don't have to simply throw the filter away when you get back in and spend like £10, you know, 5 to £10 or dollars on a new filter because, um, you know, you've used it that way. Um, because as I said, you can just spray down the outside of the filter. Don't rinse water through the filter or anything like that. The problem is, a lot of the times, filter medium will be damaged by the water or whatever. Uh, these aren't water filters, they're designed to filter air. So obviously if you start pouring water through it, especially at high speed, it might, you know, just make bits of the filter soggy or fall apart that way. But obviously there's no harm in spraying a bit of rubbing alcohol on your hand or using a sanitary wipe and basically rubbing down all the outside of the filter that you can get at. Um, so hopefully that's concluded that. I'll be streaming about 8pm again tonight, because um, loads of people have been watching those at the moment, and I'll happily answer questions again on those. Hopefully this video is helpful, but yeah, so see if you can find a rough sizing guide for a mask before you order it, if it's not a one size fits all mask. You know, tighten the straps and do a pressure check, either a positive or a negative pressure check. Um, there's probably ways around it as well, if you can't think of, you know, um, if you can't cover the hole easily, there is probably ways that you could, maybe if you've got like a plastic bag, obviously be very careful not to suffocate yourself, but you could probably put that over the inhale and exhale valves and then breathe in and out and check if the bag's deflating or, you know, filling up that way um, to check for sort of pressure problems. But yeah, anyway, um, and yeah, you don't have to throw a P3 filter, P100 filter away every time you use it as long as the filter's in good condition. I will say that the P100 filters or P3 filters in these sort of plastic cases, whether it be the 40mm ones or whatever, are better generally than the ones that are um, kind of the disc ones, as much as the disc ones are good if you can get them, because I know loads of stuff is out of stock now because of people panic buying, um, just because it is much easier. Like, the problem is I wouldn't really want to spray a mask like this down with alcohol spray because it would start soaking in. The problem is with um, the dust masks like this is they are designed to be more disposable. The reason is if you're wearing this all day, you're breathing in and out through it, you're going to get a lot of moisture and sweat into it, which kind of makes it a breeding ground for bacteria on its own right. So it's not really hygienic to keep them around for very long. Um, and also, one other thing I'll quickly note, is where some people are saying they literally can't get hold of any filters bar one type. Let's say, worst case scenario, you could only get like an A1 filter, like organic vapour one or whatever. Um, because the charcoal has to be contained in the filter, with a kind of very basic particulate filter to stop you inhaling charcoal dust um, or little charcoal pellets that would certainly be better than nothing so when I've had people saying like look I've got this filter I can't find anything else do I really need to panic and spend loads and loads of money I'd say no just stick with that filter for now until you spot something for a good price unless you're in a really really high risk area but anyway hopefully that's covered a lot of points people have been asking a lot in the comments and yeah I'll be streamed tonight at 8 p.m. If anybody wants to catch that and then ask me questions live so I can answer them easily. And I'll be trying to keep up with the comments on the videos as well. But I'm getting like 10 to 50 comments an hour at the moment. So it's quite hard to reply to all of them. But thank you everybody and stay safe.